It is official. NXT is moving to the USA Network and going live for two hours on Wednesday starting September 18th. We did not know the official start date. I had heard September 18th. I had heard September 25th. I heard October 2nd, the same night that AEW debuts. So now we know that it is September 18th. That's two weeks before AEW debuts live on TNT. So they're getting a jump on them. Uh, at which point the two shows will then be going head-to-head -head from 8 to 10 p.m. every single week. Although that may not be the case on the West Coast if NXT airs live there. And we don't have an answer to that question yet. The show will still air on the WWE Network. NXT will still uh, air and be archived on the WWE Network. But it will air on a 24-hour delay. So instead of airing at 8 p.m. or whatever time, usually on Wednesdays, the show would go up. Uh, it will now not air, first run airing on the network, until 8 p.m. on Thursdays. And after which, it will be available on demand as it always is. So it's not totally going away from the WWE Network. It is just no longer going to be first run programming on the network. The announced team is expected to remain the same. Mauro Ranallo back on, uh, I guess, broadcast TV, you would call it. Back on USA, along with Nigel McGuinness and Beth Phoenix, uh, the show will remain at full sale each week. AEW is going to be running bigger buildings. It's going to be very interesting to, to watch these two head-to-head -head side by side like that. Uh, for all the talk about AEW, it has a lot of catching up to do, and they'll never be WWE, and WWE is the big time. Uh, this is a little bit different because AEW, I mean, they're not running 20,000 seat buildings, but they're going to be running buildings where they're going to have five, six, seven thousand, ten thousand 6,000, 7,000, 10,000 people. And at full sale, you're only going to have about four or 500. So it's going to be a very different atmosphere uh, between the two shows. The possibility of an FS1 deal was very much real to the point that Fox was expecting it. And they were telling their affiliates about it. So I would imagine they can't be too happy about this. It's almost like the rug got pulled out from underneath them. Uh, but WWE has at least 30 and as many as 50 million reasons per the Observer to have agreed to move NXT to USA. That is how much money they are said to be getting per year for what looks to possibly be a two-year deal. So let's assume it is a two-year deal. We don't know that for a fact, but let's say it's two years. That would be potentially $100 million or more for two years of NXT on the USA Network. So if NXT wasn't profitable before, it just got profitable now. That's a lot of money for the Velveteen Dream and Matt Riddle and Adam Cole. I hope they're all paid accordingly. When you hear dollar figures like that being thrown around, you can see why Vince McMahon would want to make that move. Yes, to, to stick it to AEW, absolutely. That's, that's very much a part of this. But also because he loves money. Right? Isn't that what he used to say? It's all about the money. That's what he used to say on TV. That was a shoot. It was all about the money with that third hour of Monday Night Raw. Which is said to be worth about $50 million alone to the company each year. It was a USA idea, USA push for it. I mean, I guess if, if Vince wanted to stand up to USA and say, listen, this is a bad idea, we don't want to do it. He could have done that, but who knows how USA would have reacted to that. You flash $50 million in your face for a, an extra hour of a show that you've already been doing for 20-some-odd years. Well, he took the money. And you know what? If I were in his shoes, like with the NXT stuff here, I might have done the same thing. But that third hour of Raw has come at a heavy cost. How much of that supposed $50 million a year extra are they losing? each year that goes by as they erode their audience. I wonder what it's costing them long term. I know what they're making. or I, Nobody knows what they're making. Let's just make that clear. We don't know for a fact that that is what they are making. If those figures are to be believed, then we have a sense of what they're making in the short term. But what is it costing them in the long term? That would be my question. Now, a perfectly fine one-hour show in NXT has now doubled in size, coupled with three hours of Raw and two hours of SmackDown every week. That's a lot of wrestling. Uh, Belt Fan Dan 
on Twitter who has made title belts for WWE before. Uh, he drops little bits of news every now and then. I don't know uh, that it's, it's always completely uh, accurate, but he posted back in July that he was being told NXT was going not to FS1, which is what everybody was talking about, but to USA. And he also said that the 205 Live roster is likely going to be, in his words, absorbed into SmackDown once the show moves to Fox. That makes it sound like Smack, SmackDown is the blob or something. They're going to be absorbed. But there's been a lot of rumors this week of the 205 Live possibly being scrapped in the next month or two. And, and the talent uh, being migrated over to the SmackDown roster, which is not a terrible idea so long as it doesn't lead to three hours of SmackDown, which is my biggest fear. Uh, the 205 Live stuff, nothing was said officially about it this week. It's still just in the rumor realm, but I've seen it mentioned in a few different places where I think there may be some smoke to this fire, which is why I mention it. You know, but if if they were to scrap 205 Live as its own separate standalone show, that would leave NXT UK and I, I guess main event as the only original weekly in-ring programming left on the WWE Network. Plus, you got the monthly pay-per-views, you've got the quarterly uh, takeover specials, which are staying on the network, by the way. Now, I look at that, and I still think the network pays for itself. If you watch all of the pay-per-views, or even some of the pay-per-views, and you watch all the takeover specials, which is the best stuff they produce consistently, and if you are somebody who also happens to be into some of the classic content, sometimes they put DVDs on there and stuff like that, hey, I'm not sure why anybody would cancel their network subscription as long as you can afford it. You know, if you can't afford $10 a month for the network, then obviously you've got, uh, you know, bigger issues than subscribing to the WWE Network to worry about. But, you know, if the WWE Network is one of many things that you subscribe to, you subscribe to Netflix and, and uh, Pandora or whatever, and it's one of many things you subscribe to, I, you know, I hear people saying, I'm going to cancel my network. Oh, NXT is moving to USA. That's it. That's the only reason why I even had my network subscription. You know, I mean, cancel your network subscription if you never use it. But NXT is still going to be on the network. And it, it's still a steal for the price that they charge. We'll see how much they charge for that premium tier once it launches. But uh, all this chatter I saw, and even some of it in the, in the Facebook group about canceling the network because of this, just doesn't make any sense. So USA, you know, I don't want to spend too much time talking ratings and numbers. I know people are pretty much uh, bored of it at this point. But I, I do think it's worth mentioning. USA Network does about a million viewers typically at 8 p.m. on Wednesdays. So NXT would have to at least stay in that range to be considered a success. They'll have those first two shows unopposed to any other wrestling programming. You know, head-to-head, -head, I think it's going to be fun to see who comes out on top. Uh, I said months ago, somebody asked me to make a prediction. And I'm, I'm going to stick with my prediction. I said months ago that I thought 500,000 viewers would be a realistic place for AEW to start. And hopefully they can then grow that number from there because you would hope the number goes up and not down. But I, I figured they would start around the 500,000 range. If they do a million, I'll be impressed. If they do a lot more than a million, I'll be very impressed. You know, this is going to be a very different head-to-head -head battle for eyeballs each week as compared to 20 years ago. And not just because now we have, you know, DVR. I look at those numbers like, you know, people view the... And I'm talking about the numbers from 20 years ago. I look at those numbers the way that people look at the juicing era of baseball with all the home runs. You know, not, not that guys don't juice at all anymore. But it's a different time now. They've cracked down on a lot of that. It was the Wild West back then. Those days are over. If people know they can watch NXT on the network 24 hours later, are people going to be more apt to favor watching AEW Live over NXT? I mean, that's my plan. I'll speak for myself. That's that's my plan with this. I, I'll flip during commercials or if there's like a really big main event on NXT. Uh, but my plan is to watch AEW Live and then get caught up later on on NXT because that's what I do now. I never watch NXT when it airs on Wednesdays. I mean, many like years ago I used to do that. I mean, my brother and I would sit down and watch it. 
And he lost all interest, so, you know, I was watching it and then just started doing other things. Or watching other things, because I knew I could just pick up with it later that night, the next day. I usually watch it the next day, sometimes I watch it on Friday. People who are already accustomed to doing that will probably just keep doing that. Yeah, with the ratings, there is one interesting note. Uh, the Sports Business Daily I saw this week reported that starting October 3rd, which is the day after AEW debuts on TNT, Nielsen is going to begin incorporating out-of-home data into its overnight ratings. And instead of being released the next morning at 8 a.m., they're going to be pushing the release of those overnight numbers back to about 1 p.m. each day. So I'm not sure that that's really going to affect NXT or AEW much since we already, I mean, usually when we hear about ratings, it's in the afternoons, right? It's later in the day. Uh, but if you do see early numbers reported the very next uh, day, they could very well end up being bigger than what the actual numbers end up being later in the day now that they're going to be incorporating all of this uh, additional data. So anyway, if you don't follow ratings or give a shit about them, then none of this even matters. But you know, some people mock, I have to say this, some people, you know, well, the Wednesday Night Wars, right? The Wednesday Night Wars. And then some people mock that, what war? There is no war. And when you hear me mention it, or if I have it in a funny graphic, you know, if I have uh, my, my very uh, talented guy do the graphics on YouTube, and we always try to make them uh, humorous, and if you see all the Wednesday Night War, it's partially tongue-in-cheek, but not completely. Because if you don't think that there are people on both sides who don't view this as a competition, you're out of your mind. You don't know what you're talking about. AEW can say that, oh, we, we don't, you know, we don't look at it as competition. We're just doing our own thing. WWE can say that also. They don't view it as competition. But you know full well that they're, good. they're both going to be paying attention to what the other is doing. That's inevitable. And possibly even programming their shows after a while in certain segments accordingly. That's what happened uh, 20 years ago, and I suspect that's what will end up happening here as well. And neither side is going to be very happy if they're the ones getting their asses handed to them when the numbers come out the very next day. Because when it comes to television, that is still how a lot of people measure success. Even though you could argue that it's really about how much you pull in ad money and, and stuff like that. As a fan, none of, none of this matters to my bottom line, but it's fun to follow along and play both sides against each other while still flipping around like it's 1998 and just enjoying both shows. So, is it a war? Yeah, it is. It's a war for eyeballs. And nobody wants to be on the losing end of that war. You know, success is not assured for AEW. I know they've been very impressive so far. A whole string of sellouts, and there's a, a, a palpable buzz around this product without them even having had their first television show yet. That's very impressive. That's not anything we've seen from another company or startup in a very long time, if ever. They've got something magical going on right now. How long can they ride that wave out for? Well, we're about to find out. But success is not guaranteed. They could blow everyone's predictions away. Or they could flop. Like Vince McMahon taking a stunner. And if they flop, that's terrible for wrestling. So I hope they succeed. I hope NXT does well, and maybe they can combine each week for a couple of million people. As for keeping NXT as is and not messing with the formula of the show, I hope that's the case. I hope Triple H is allowed to just keep running the show the way that he has been. But the best part of WWE's announcement of uh, NXT moving to USA, and I'd, I'd say this qualifies for sad tweet, uh, was Andrade. Copy and pasting the email that he received from WWE's PR team. He quote tweeted WWE's announcement of NXT moving to USA. And in his tweet, in his comment, he just pasted the following text verbatim. Hey, as a former NXT champion, can you comment on this? NXT is going live on the USA Network on Wednesdays. He literally just pasted what they sent him the question the question that this pr person sent him and at the end he just added three fist bump emojis i love it 